Let's talk about five DC keys that have gone ice cold. Five books that have dipped in their most recent value. Before we get into it, don't forget to follow me here on Facebook and Instagram for more daily content, but more of that at the end. There's five books that, you know, I've looked at recently and I think they've kind of, you know, for whatever reason, they have some importance to them for experiences, whatever it may be. And I think they've noticed a, uh, a massive dip here along with the market, of course. But these books, you know, may currently be overlooked a little bit. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of my picks and if you have any other books that you think are super undervalued right now or super cold, at least. You know, our first book up here is X Zero, number one, or X Zero, number one, or whatever you want to call it. I believe it's X Zero. Uh, it was announced back in February of last year. 50 Cent's production company, G Unit, has picked up X Zero. And uh, a little bit of info has been heard since, honestly. I haven't heard a whole lot about it. And with the James, uh, James Gunn and Saffron takeover, all eyes are kind of off the prior announced stuff, uh, prior announced projects. Rumors of a Splinter Snyderverse has speculated, which points to possibilities of Gunn and Saffron. They may be not having, you know, ultimate control over the properties and their contracts. And, you know, with 50 cents recent split from Power or from Stars, and uh, he bought a massive 985,000 square foot studio, which is insane to shoot, you know, his productions. As we know, Power will be on there, but possibly X Zero is maybe on a slate somewhere. So who knows? But uh, it's there's not a whole lot of recent sales in this book. Not a lot of graded history either. Uh, with a ton of copies on active listings, this cover is always ticked up with that black and that red. And it can be tough to find those cheap bins, not ticked to hell, or tough to find really at all. Um, it's been, let alone not ticked up. Uh, with only 17 copies in the census, that's a low census count for sure. Especially with something that's been optioned for a little while now it's something to keep an eye out for you know uh, you know maybe in those cheap ends or catch online auction you know, a few have gone for you know under 10 bucks semi recently uh or you can set it off or to the guys that if they're 30 dollars copies still just kind of sitting there they'll probably sit on for a while hopefully they're not into it too much early they didn't buy it at the height of the market and uh so who knows with the possibility of the show on the way and the massive studio 50 picked up i definitely think this is a book to keep an eye out for at the least in the back of your mind maybe finding those cheap bins uh and the rest of the series is fun and it's a nice challenge to try and put together in those dollar bins because you don't see them too often now moving on to the next book here we are just leaving Mary number 21 now this is a massive key it's a classic book this is the first true silver experience of the jsa now you're probably thinking it's flash 129 I disagree. That's a flashback. That's not their first true appearance. This is their first incontinuity appearance in the Silver Age. Uh, I kind of look at the Flash 129. It was just like a, a reprint. So I know it's original artwork and all that, but it's just, I don't know. To me, this is their true Silver Age appearance. And it is also their first meeting with the JLA, which that's a massive, you know, point in the DC history. It's Green Arrow and Black Canary's first time meeting. Uh, and it's also the, f uh, the first part of Crisis on Earth. So, a whole lot of firsts here. It's also, on top of all that, the true first Silver Age periods overall of Our Man, Wizard, Icicle, Dr. Fate, and maybe even the Fiddler. I know Fiddler's in this issue, but I can't remember if he's in anything prior to this in the Silver Age, or if he's just in the Gold Age prior. So, I believe it's also uh, Fiddler's first Silver, but it's at least Wizard, Icicle, Our Man, and Dr. Fate's first Silver Age periods overall, which is pretty cool. Uh, we've seen at least one rendition of this team in live action already with Black Adam, and there was the Super Bowl rendition. And the Black Adam actor for Hawkman has talked about how he wants to come back and do more with the character. So, hopefully, Gunn and Saffron have this iconic team on a board somewhere. It's, it's a massive, massive key. It's also second period to Kronos. It's the first team up between the two Green Lanterns, Alan Scott and Hal Jordan. There's a lot to this book. This is a big book. Now, a recent roll sold as low as 100 bucks, And, you know, it's a lower grade copy, but 100 bucks for a complete attached copy that presents pretty well? That's crazy to me. You know, the most often graded this book at CGC is a 4.5, which recently sold for 160 half of the 2021 average. This is a massive best book. I know I've said it five times already. But even at a buck eighty, you know, which seems to be some of the, the higher end of the low grade copies go for with this beautiful Sikowski cover, Sikowski Sky cover. Uh I, I'm just shocked to see this book on that low end, and it's very affordable at a lower end of mid grade copy. So this is definitely something to keep an eye out on because it's definitely, definitely ice cold right now. 
Now, Batman 307 is a great book. Uh, it's first appearance of Lucius Fox. I talked about this book recently in my $3 haul video. Go check it out from the last week or two if you haven't already. And Mrs. A Motorcycle did a great uh, video on their Instagram page where they stumped some of the fellow dealers in my area and uh, with this book. And I was a little bit disappointed in those guys. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but, you know, the most common grade CGC has for this book is a 9.6 because this is one of those books where, you know, guys are really just sending it if they have high-grade copies. And it is half the price it was in 2021. And the 9.8 price kind of has basically the same problem, going from 900-something bucks down to 500-something bucks. So roughly half, a little bit over half. Now, this is one you can find for either 3 bucks like I did or around $10 mark online right now. But for a major Batman character we've seen in live action, we may see again uh, from the late 70s. This book has a lot of room to jump back up. And, you know, check your LCSs, check your local flea markets. So who knows, you might find it in those cheap bins. And it's a great key. I picked one up for three bucks. You know, it's a little bit beat up, but still it's a great book. And keep an eye out for the Whitman as well. Uh, moving on to the next book here, number four is Static Shock number one. Now, Static is an iconic milestone hero with some expensive keys that aren't really his first appearance. I mean, Rawls, you know, the, those poly bags can, you know, go for $30 range. And the last few issues go for really more than that. This one's at $50, $60, even more than that sometimes. You know, especially if they're nice. You know, those books are always kind of ticked up. And they're just hard to find at all. Uh, you know, his first appearance is, you know, arguably major key for 93. And Gunn recently teased the statics involvement in the upcoming films, which I covered on my YouTube shorts where I talk about a lot of, you know, new comic news and announcements, stuff like that. Uh, but the 98 is the most often greatest gun being, you know, it's a 90s key. But with that poly bag, it can't be tough to get that high grade. Uh, and, you know, that, that real prestige grade. And it's currently under $200, which again, you know, is almost half the 2021 average. That's crazy to me. Uh, this has also got the, the Cohen variant, which is often ticked up, and uh, the newsstand is pretty elusive there. And really elusive is that Platinum variant, which is very expensive. That 98 treatment has only dropped about 100 bucks in, in the two years, and Raw is just 150 to 100 bucks. They still really haven't changed a whole lot. But that A cover and the variant you can find for even under $30. That's a pretty good buy-in for a classic character that Gunn's already teased he's bringing into live action. Now, moving on to the fifth and final book. This one's a bit of a stretch, but, you know, let me cook here. You all do collector's edition number 56, the iconic Neil Adams wraparound Superman Muhammad Ali issue. What a book. Now, this is one of those treasury editions, so there's no great history on it, but a lot of recent solds. I was shocked to see how many recent solds were on here on this book, and especially because it's not something that I wouldn't really want to ship, to be honest with you. And uh, there's a decent amount of them are under 100 bucks. I mean, some of them in that $50 range, some of them under 50 bucks. I mean, I think I counted 13 copies in the last couple months that sold online for under 100 bucks. That's a lot. And this is a book that doesn't show up at shops and shows very often. Now, is that because guys don't want to lug it at the shows? Maybe. But I really don't see this book that often. It's super iconic, possibly one of the most famous non-Batman Neil Adams covers of all time. I mean, it's beautiful. It's a great cover. It's super iconic. One of the most iconic covers of the 70s. And it's the treasury edition to have. Now, sure, some copies went for more. And, you know, for all kinds of different grades, of course. But, and it's one of those, it's a pain in the ship. And as long as it's attached and it's all there and it presents well, that's all you really need with this book. And under 100 bucks for any complete copy seems crazy to me. You know, tell me down below if you think I'm, you know, I'm off here, but... Have you ever seen a copy uh, in the last decade, really, of uh, uh, you know, sellers wasn't asking over 100 bucks for call this a grade or if it's a women copy or anything like that? You know, it's one of those books where guys always, they price up if they know they can get it because it doesn't doesn't show up too, too often. I, you know, I haven't seen one come in the shop that I work out in forever, you know, so it's just, it's a great book. It's super iconic cover. And I was just, I was absolutely shocked to see it anywhere's in that $100 range, let alone several price, you know, sold well under the $100 range. But let me know down below uh, what other books you've noticed have cooled way off recently, especially since that 2021 peak. We've kind of come down a little bit. Now the market's starting to bounce here and there with certain books, but some books are still kind of left behind, still kind of, maybe it's a buyer's market still in certain books. So keep an eye out for that. If you haven't already, follow me here on Facebook and Instagram for more daily content. I'm doing all kinds of stuff. I post on YouTube shorts every single day, multiple times a day. I post on Instagram and Facebook throughout the week. You got a Tales of the Hunt series uh, where I recap my adventures over on Instagram. And then, of course, I do the hauls here and all kinds of stuff like that. You know, I got Facebook stuff coming up. And we got the Facebook group, Fans Unleashed, where you see an inside look at Connor's comics, behind the scenes, all kinds of stuff like that where you can 
uh, vote on polls for new videos. You could post your own stuff. You could post your own content. You could post, you know, did you read a comic? Did you watch a movie? You want to talk about something in, you know, this sort of realm. Go to Phantoms Unleashed. All kinds of great discussions every single day. That's all linked down below. And happy hunting. Peace. Thank you.